In this video I'm going to respond to a former Greenpeace activist called Patrick Moore. He describes himself as the sensible environmentalist. If you're interested you'll find a link to his 20 minute video in the description. I'm only going to respond to some of it here. Let's see how sensible his arguments are. The science is not settled. I'm going to tell you why carbon dioxide isn't going to end life on our planet, but instead is responsible for the existence of every living thing on Earth. Contrary to what Mr. Moore claims here, the vast majority of scientists who study the climate, otherwise known as climatologists, do think that the carbon dioxide emissions released from deforestation and burning fossil fuels have contributed significantly to the rise in global average temperature over the last few decades by adding to the natural greenhouse effect. The climate scientists who claim that there is not a consensus on this are in a minority. Please don't mistake what I'm saying here as an appeal to authority. It is an appeal to the fact that the scientific method is reliable. As for the idea that carbon dioxide is going to end life on this planet, I have to ask, who is making this claim? If increasing temperatures cause a lot more melting of Arctic permafrost, as it is already doing, we may well end up with a positive feedback in which methane, an even more potent greenhouse gas, exacerbates the problem. But this will not end life on the Earth. It might displace millions of humans due to rising sea levels. It might lead to mass starvation and war, mass extinctions even, but there will still be life on this planet, even if it is uninhabitable for humans. Back to Mr. Moore. Is the Earth warming? Well, yes. There's been slight warming in the past 300 years since the peak of the Little Ice Age. But guess what? There's no scientific proof that this is caused by carbon dioxide. For someone who has a science degree, it seems odd that he speaks of proof rather than evidence. It also seems unfathomable to me that he would make a statement like that while ignoring the massive elephant in the room, the fact that over this same time frame, humans have learned how to use technology which requires the burning of fossil fuels and added more than 30% to the carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere. We are adding four extra gigatons of carbon per year to the atmosphere, never mind the extra uptake of the oceans and plant life. In other words, by our activity, we are transferring thousands of millions of tons of carbon from the Earth's crust to the atmosphere every year. And as I mentioned before, carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas which causes more heat from the sun to be retained as the levels increase. To deny this is to go down a conspiratorial rabbit hole in which climate scientists are not really trying to figure out what is going on, an alternative reality in which they are simply fiddling the figures in order to get more funding. Carbon dioxide, also called CO2, is responsible for all life on Earth. It's the building block. Without carbon dioxide, this would be a dead planet because all plants breathe CO2 just like we breathe oxygen. So far, so good. So what would happen if eco-activists got their wish and brought an end to all CO2 emissions from fossil fuels? Well, eventually the Earth would begin to die from a lack of CO2. Whoa there. For starters, the CO2 we've already added to the atmosphere will have an added warming effect for at least 100 years, probably more. Even if we shut down every coal plant and turned off every internal combustion engine tomorrow, of course, that's not going to happen. Then, if we look at the Antarctic ice core data, we see that the natural levels of CO2 going back nearly half a million years has fluctuated between 180 and 280 parts per million. Life managed to survive just fine for nearly 4 billion years before human beings discovered that burning fossil fuels was useful to them. So let's talk about the science behind carbon dioxide and whether or not it's actually causing the climate to change. NASA tells us that carbon dioxide controls Earth's temperature. 
in a childlike denial of the many other factors involved in climate change. I have to wonder if Mr. Moore even read the article. He certainly didn't provide a link to it, as I have in the description below. He fails to mention that the article describes carbon dioxide as a thermostat, which affects the levels of water vapour, which is the main greenhouse gas. The article does not describe CO2 as the sole cause of global warming. It seems odd that we should see such shoddy scholarship from somebody who likes to mention their scientific credentials. I have a PhD in ecology. But could this fear-mongering be self-serving for NASA? Think about it. NASA also says there might be life on Mars, decades after it was demonstrated there was no life on Mars. Could it be that NASA is just trying to keep their public funding for expeditions to the Red Planet? Maybe that's what NASA is doing with climate change. That was a low blow. Trying to discredit NASA by appealing to speculation and blurring the line between microbial life and obviously more advanced life. It seems like he's appealing to the conspiratorial mindset which favours sensational headlines and speculation over actually reading the scientific literature. Now I want to take you through some charts. They're a bit complicated, but they're important to explain what's really going on here. Good. I'll be checking just in case Mr. Moore misrepresents climate science in any way. Let's first look at the long-term history of the Earth's temperature and CO2 in the Earth's atmosphere. I'm going to focus on the past 540 million years since modern life forms evolved. The purple line shows the CO2, and the blue line is the global temperature. So if CO2 makes the global temperature warmer, these lines should be dipping and spiking in unison with each other. But check out the Jurassic period, 150 million years ago. The temperature plummets while the CO2, the purple line, goes up. And then again, 50 million years ago during the Eocene thermal maximum, temperature was at its highest in the past 500 million years, but CO2 had been on a downward track for 100 million years. So it is not possible to demonstrate a cause and effect relationship between CO2 and temperature over the long-term history. Oh dear. What Mr. Moore has failed to do is to take the effect of solar radiation into account. No climate scientist claims that CO2 is the sole cause of climate change. It is a contributing factor. Over hundreds of millions of years, the Sun, a type G2 main sequence star, has been putting out more radiation over time meaning that it was significantly weaker in the past. The much higher levels of CO2 in the atmosphere back then would have enhanced the greenhouse effect, so the Earth was warmer than it would have been if levels were the same as today's. Now let's zoom in even closer to the CO2 and temperature correlations in the Earth's history. This chart goes back over 300,000 years. That's where we start to see the strong correlation between CO2 and temperature. So maybe this is a cause and effect relationship. But here's the problem. CO2 lags temperature by an average of 800 years. So temperature changes are making the CO2 levels increase and decrease, not the other way around, as the cause never comes after the effect. This was the fundamental fraud in Al Gore's movie. Firstly, Al Gore is not a scientist. Secondly, CO2 has not been the main driver of temperature change over the entire Earth's history. The changing orbit of the Earth allows more or less sunlight or insulation to warm or cool the planet. CO2 can lag or lead. It's not as simple as Mr. Moore is trying to make out. No climate scientist is claiming that CO2 is the sole causal factor. Between 1910 to 1940, there was a 30-year period of warming, followed by a cooling from 1940 to 1970, just as CO2 emissions began to rise exponentially. And then from 1970 to 2000, there was another 30-year warming that was very similar in duration and temperature rise to the warming from 1910 to 1940. What caused that warming? How do they know that the causes of the warming from 1970 to 2000 
weren't the same as the causes of the warming from 1910 to 1940. The logic and the data just don't add up. The problem here is that Mr. Moore is cherry picking particular dates. We need to zoom out and look at the overall trend. Climate change is a multi-decadal thing. Of course, there will be variations from year to year. This is noise in the data. The data show clearly that the temperature is not rising exponentially, whereas CO2 emissions are doing so. It hasn't warmed significantly for nearly 20 years, during which time about one third of all human CO2 emissions have occurred. So again, there is no obvious cause and effect relationship between CO2 and temperature rise. Again, like so many of the so-called skeptics of climate science, he is in this case cherry-picking 1998 as his start point. Why? Because 1998 was an unusually warm year. And like I said before, climate is measured on a scale of multiple decades, 30 years or more. Furthermore, climate scientists do not claim that temperature should rise exponentially. A doubling of CO2, say from 280 to 560 parts per million, should result in an increase of between 2 and 3 degrees Celsius. That is the prediction. So when the CO2 level does reach 560 parts per million, within the lifetime of some of you young people watching this, you can check to see if the prediction was accurate. One more thing. The graph he shows is atypical. In other words, he chose that one because all of the others indicate that average temperature has indeed been increasing since 1998. But still, carbon has been branded as a deadly pollutant. By whom? I'm unaware of any scientific source which has come out with anything as black and white as that. You could call water a pollutant. After all, if you breathe enough of it into your lungs, you will drown. But who's doing that? When did common sense go out the window? The important thing with carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is the concentration. The natural level is between 180 and 280 parts per million. We are obviously way above that now and the level is rising. Arguing that it was much higher tens or hundreds of millions of years ago is a meaningless distraction. Like I already mentioned, the sun was weaker back then. There is also the fact that we evolved in the relatively stable current climate. Only half of the CO2 we are emitting from fossil fuels is showing up in the atmosphere. The rest, according to the best science, is going to a global increase in trees, plants and crops. I have to question what this thing is that he calls the best science. He claims that half of CO2 emissions from fossil fuels are ending up in the atmosphere and that the other half are ending up in plants, trees and crops. This is simply not true. A basic understanding of the short-term carbon cycle tells us that humans emit about 9 gigatons of carbon per year, four of which end up in the atmosphere, three are taken up by photosynthesis and the remaining two are absorbed by the oceans. This graphic also includes the carbon released from cement production and land use change such as deforestation. Further on, he does mention the oceans as being a carbon sink. With this in mind, it would be fair to say that he comes across as being inconsistent or confused. Is an increase in carbon emissions all going into the atmosphere? Well, no. It's spread throughout the atmosphere, plants, animals, soils and the oceans. Anyway, moving on. So can we all agree that carbon is not the enemy? Can we agree that it's actually the reason we are alive? And it's not making the world much warmer, if at all. We can agree that carbon is not the enemy. It is simply an element. When combined as a molecule with two oxygen atoms, it is a greenhouse gas. As such, it's important to understand what effects increasing its concentration in the atmosphere might be. This is where we part company. Climate scientists don't argue that its effect on global warming are negligible. Personally, I'm more inclined to take climate scientists seriously than those who make poor arguments against them. What do you think? Mm -hmm.